The values of cryptocurrencies, they are based on supply and demand. If people want something more, the value goes up. If people want something less, they want to get rid of it, they want to sell it, the value goes down. Now, the question is, what, what makes people want something? It is emotion, it is uh, idea, it is wish to have it. And where do they get that? Is information. And information they mainly get from the internet. Now, as we know, internet is full of everything. Whatever we want to say, whatever we want to write, we can put it up on the internet. And then others can read. It is very easy to manipulate with information that is online. And that is what is actually happening. Because there are people who are, who are interested in the value of a certain currency going up and down. Certain moments going up, certain moments going down. And, and this is what, what has gone wrong with, with cryptocurrencies. Yes, it does give liquidity for the currencies, so people can buy and sell, but the result is massive fluctuation. Prices going up and down, up and down. And, and this is something that, that uh, scares people, terrifies people. Because we need to be able to rely on, on cryptocurrency, because cryptocurrency is money. It's, it's nothing else, it's not a financial instrument as, as it is being used now. That is wrong. Cryptocurrency is money. And money needs to be stable. So if we want people to start using cryptocurrency, people need to, first people need to be able to rely on that. They, will, they need to be able to, to feel comfortable with that. And what they cannot do right now is they cannot be sure what will be the value of a currency be tomorrow. Prices go up and down. Whatever cryptocurrency you, you, you open and, and you, you look at the graph and the past, past history, none, none of them is stable. And this is a big problem. That's, that's a huge problem right now in the crypto, crypto markets. So the value comes from people's emotions, from the information that is on the internet. And there, there is a group of people who, who know exactly what is going on with cryptocurrencies, but the majority only knows and re, uh, the information that comes from the news, from the blogs, from the videos. And, and all those, those uh, channels, they are biased. They, they serve somebody's purpose. The information they give there, the, the information they promote supports some kind of action. And usually it supports selling a coin or a token. So if, uh, if we take cryptocurrency and if, if we take it long term, then uh, it is something that, that should be widely adopted. That's what, what we all want, because there are so many good benefits about cryptocurrency. Now people, they... Uh, they want to have the financial financial gain and and within throughout the whole last year it was strongly promoted that crypto is the best investment it's it's the best place where to put your money yes it is but it has to be done correctly so uh, it's it's wrong to to promote just the price it, it is wrong to 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 push up a price it is wrong to to do the pump and dumps what should be done is we should be talking about the real values of cryptocurrency. We should be talking what cryptocurrency can do for the world, how people can benefit from that. And that will really make people understand what it is. Right now, what people know about cryptocurrency? Buy low, sell high. Financial instrument, making money, investment. Put in the money, take out the profit, put in the money into the next one. It doesn't help any of the projects. They're there are so many different cryptocurrencies out there, thousands that are being traded. And a lot of them actually have really good potential, they have really good ideas, they are really good projects. But because the mentality is that it's a financial instrument, we buy and we sell, then this is something that affects the understanding or the perception of, of these projects. Because if you look at the, a graph of, of, uh, of a coin and it, it goes up and then it goes down, we think, okay, that's a bad project. It might not be. It's just the information that was given to people made them sell the coin. 
at the same time the team can be working really well. The team can be coming up with amazing solutions, amazing ideas. Uh, but that, what, what people think is, is that it is, it is nothing worth investing, nothing worth holding. So the supply and demand is a good idea, but first it has to be somehow stable. We should reach to, to uh, having the price based on supply and demand, but there are also threats, there, there are dangers, especially in the beginning. Because, you know, why, why crypto is based on supply and demand is that regular money is, money's value is based on supply and demand. Now, that makes sense. Um, initially, it was backed by gold. Uh, after losing the gold standard, the value became based on, on supply and demand. But the difference is that the community there is massive. There is so many people and if, if some people want to affect, if some people want to manipulate with the price, it is, it is a small portion. It is a small part of, of the community. The majority is still with the currency. And that is what gives the stability. Now with cryptocurrency, the community is so small. It's, it's so small that, that if, if there is a bigger news in a, in a newspaper that is supporting cryptocurrency, people go crazy. If there is something against, people get scared. And, and all of these things, they affect what people do on the exchange. They buy or they sell. And when they buy, the price goes up. When they sell, the price comes down. So being on supply and demand is dangerous in the beginning, especially because the, the whole money in, in circulation in cryptocurrencies is so small. The speculative value, yes, about uh, 200 billion at this moment. The real, the real money, much smaller, much, much smaller. And whatever is, is a, is a, has a small value can be easily manipulated with a, with a bigger amount of money. So this is what's happening right now. People are, are manipulating with the information on the internet, which pushes the price up or brings it down. And there are people who have a lot of money, whales, who, who also manipulate with, uh, with the buy and sell orders to push the price up or, or, or to pull it down. And, and for a regular person, what they see, they see that, okay, this goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down. They have no idea why this is happening. They have no idea what is behind that. And for them, it is scary, it is dangerous. So they want to stay away from cryptocurrencies. And the same thing is with merchants. Merchants, they want to be sure that if they sell a product, if they sell a cup for, for $10 right now, then that $10 is also $10 tomorrow, not six or eight. Yeah, of course they're happy if it is 12, but they can't risk if it is less. So the value right now, it's not only based on supply and demand, the value is based on the wishes of a small group. The value is based on the people who manipulate with the internet, with the information in the internet, and the value is based on the people who have more money, who want to play with the money. With, with that coin, we, um, we wanted to create something that, that really brings out the benefits of cryptocurrency, that really gives people a currency that they can use globally, everywhere, whenever they want. For that reason, the price has to be stable. So I believe that, that uh, a currency can be valued based on supply and demand, but only when it has established itself. And established a currency means that the community is, is global and it's wide and it's a huge community. In the beginning, I believe that the cryptocurrency should be built up kind of the same way as, as, as fiat money, value-wise. So, um, it should be based, or the price should be um, tied to something that is measurable, understandable, and logical. So, in big picture, what gives value to a currency? The people that are using it. It's the community. What gives value to, uh, to cryptocurrency, in this case, would be the people who use the currency, who hold it. The people, the merchants who accept the currency, because if we want money to be usable, we need merchants, shops. 
and, and then the possibility is what we can do with the currency and that's the ecosystem. So initially these three factors are the ones that, that uh, define the value of a currency. At a later stage usage so, which is the amount of transactions, real transactions, not transactions on the exchanges but transactions between people and merchants should be also included. But they should be only included when the world is ready. Right now it is it's way too early for, for cryptocurrencies to be, to be used uh, because the world is not ready, the ecosystem, the infrastructure, it's not there yet. There are first merchants who accept but it's, it shouldn't be the focus. Right now the merchant should show up the willingness to, to accept cryptocurrency, to, to show the support for cryptocurrency because there's so, so many benefits for them as well. Uh, so right now to include the usage would be too early. Maybe after a few years and, and well, of course it depends on the, on the environment, the country. Uh, for some countries it should be after 10 years, for some after a few years, for some maybe even 15, 20 years. But what we can value, what we can measure today is the amount of users, the user community, the merchants supporting it, and then what are the, what are the parts of the ecosystem. So the bigger the community grows, the more valuable the currency is. And it is not about how much money people put into the currency, it's about the number of people. Because it doesn't help if, if one person puts in 100 million euros into a currency. That doesn't help. But if there's 100,000 people putting one euro, then that's a community. And community gives value. Not the money, it's the number of people. Then, merchants. Places where we can use the, the coins. And, and these merchants and users, they go, they go hand in hand. Because the more there are users, the more there will be merchants. The more there are merchants, the more the users will see that, okay, we can use it here. So it's like a snowball, one helps another. But the logical thing is that it starts from the users and then merchants will follow. And then of course the ecosystem, because I believe that, uh, that whatever we can do with fiat money, whatever solutions there are, the same things we must be able to do with cryptocurrency. And this is what we as a company have taken our focus to create it the most usable, the most easy to use cryptocurrency that there is. And having the evaluation based on these, the user community, the more the users, the higher the value. If, users, if, if there are less users, the value will come down. Then merchants, if there are mer more merchants accepting the currency, the value goes up. If there are less merchants, the value comes down. Ecosystem, if there are more possibilities, the value goes up. If there are less possibilities, uh, the value comes down. So these three are the factors that affect the price. And this gives an understanding for people how the currency is valued, first of all, and it gives stability. Because um, if the value is based on supply and demand, then uh, it is very easy to affect, manipulate the price with just purely with money. But if it is based on fundamental values that are measurable, then this cannot be manipulated. Of course, we can affect some groups of people, but it will still keep the price much more stable compared to the value of uh, being uh, compared to the price being valued on, on supply and demand. And this, I believe, is, is the key to, to actually creating a stable currency, giving people the understanding that this is something that we can use thanks to stability, and, and this will attract much more people to, to support the coin, to support the project, and, and they see that this is something that we can put our efforts in, in the long term.